And now we switch to analyzing the risk of a project. So sensitivity analysis measures the effect of changes in a particular variable like say for example revenues on a project's net present value. To perform a sensitivity analysis all variables are fixed at their expected values except one. In this case if we just changed revenues. That one variable like revenues is then changed often by specified percentages and the resulting effect on NPV is recorded. So now we look at what are the advantages and disadvantages of sensitivity analysis. Well, there are two main disadvantages and that is that it does not reflect the effects of diversification and the second one is that it does not incorporate any information about the possible magnitude of the forecast errors. So a sensitivity analysis might indicate that a project's NPV is highly sensitive to the sales forecast therefore that project is quite risky but if the project sales which are, are its revenues are fixed by a long-term contract then sales variations may actually contribute little to the project's risk. Therefore in many situations sensitivity analysis is not a particularly good indicator of risk. However sensitivity analysis does identify those variables that potentially have the greatest impact on profitability and this helps management focus its attention on those variables that are probably most important. I pulled up an example for sensitivity analysis and this is for um, a problem that's different that than is in your PowerPoint slide but you can see that the main point is for these are showing the percentage deviation from the base case scenario. So um, the base case was that you don't change the unit sales for this particular box. And so here we decrease unit sales by 10% and decrease by 20% or increase by 10 or increase by 20. And so you see what the new MPV, the, the base case MPV for this problem was $4,014 and then we can see what would happen if we decreased um, unit sales for or increased them. We get these new numbers. And so they've done this for weighted average cost of capital. What if they changed it? What if they changed variable costs? And we're just changing one of these at a time. What if we change sales price, fixed costs, and equipment cost? And the way that it's the easiest to see is if you graph all of these charts based on you know minus 10 percent change in whatever it was or minus 20 percent and you can see that in this chart with the different lines the steepest lines represent the variables that are the most sensitive to changes and so these are the identifies like this identifies the danger variables the ones you want to be the most sure on um, when you're doing your estimates for the cash flows so you can see for for this example, the danger variables are variable costs because it has a steep line, it's this pink line, and sales price also has a steep line. So they really affect the final MPV that's plotted along here on the y-axis. Um, I guess the second steepest slope is the, I, oh, it's hard to tell, I guess it's this brown line which is the equipment cost and and then you can see that for some reason with the weighted average cost of capital the purple line it doesn't really change very much so that's an example of sensitivity analysis and again the weakness one of the weaknesses is that it only considers like one change at a time and it doesn't consider the fact that well what if if sales price changes then there might be a lot of other problems going on equipment costs would be changing variable costs would be changing and it doesn't give us like multiple changes at once to see the effect on net present value so let's go back um, to the PowerPoint so now let's look at the situation what if 
inflation equals 5%, then well, is our NPV that we calculated, which we got a negative NPV, is it biased? Well, so from the data that we've been working with, we, we know that we didn't include inflation and we didn't put that into the calculations. Um, we just held the sales price constant rather than making it rise with inflation and we made costs stay constant. So what we should do is make revenues and costs increase by 5% per year. And since revenues are larger than operating costs, inflation will cause cash flows to increase. And this will lead to a higher MPV, IRR, and MIRR, and to a shorter payback. And so here's where we've taken those numbers and increased them by 5% inflation. We don't increase depreciation because that's a that's set in stone by the makers table. And then everything else like EBIT and taxes just follows from what we put up here for revenues and costs. So they don't really, they just have the effects of what we did with increasing inflation. And so we have new cash flows down here at the bottom. And now we're going to find the net present value of the new cash flows. And so you see that we get an MPV now of $15,000 and it's positive. So now based on including inflation, we would accept the project, whereas before we would reject it. The IRR is now 12.6%, which is above the weighted average cost of capital of 10. The MIRR is 11.6%, which is above 10%, and the payback is 3.1 years. So now this project looks like we should accept it.